Now, if you've watched this show before, you know these are colors. I am, you know, I'm not Miss Pink person. <laughs> okay, here comes a good one. <laughs> Think unexpected in the shadows. I like to put, actually, I like to put unexpected things everywhere. I don't know, you ever remember being a kid and uh, playing with the shadows on the wall and doing little birds? And <laughs> <laughs> hey, doesn't that sock monkey look relaxed? Welcome to Give Your Walls Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Well, that's because he's had a lot of ice cream. Today we're going to paint ice cream. I, I went out to the ice cream store. And I stood in front and decided I was just going to approach moms and dads and say, okay, I'll buy your kids ice cream if I can take pictures of them and, and uh, if they'd model for me. Well, they all thought I was a wackadoo. <laughs> and I wasn't getting any takers. Like, pull that kid away from that lady. Um, so I ran into our local uh, grocery store and happened to run into to somebody I know, um, Gina Arnold and her, and her sons, Chad and Owen. And I said before the kids could hear, hey, I'll buy the kids ice cream. Do you mind if they have ice cream before dinner? And um, if they would just pose for me so that I can get this reference photo for the TV shoot. And um, Gina said, yeah, sure. So uh, the kids were ecstatic. And uh, Chad and Owen said they were going to write their little, what I did on my summer vacation. They, they uh, modeled for ice cream and they, and they, <laughs> and they um, got paid to do it and be on TV. They're just, they were just totally stoked. So it was fun. The interesting thing about all, all of this is that uh, I bought them whatever flavor that they wanted. And then I had, uh, so they got these wild flavors. And then I bought the ice cream that I was, that I was going to actually pose and have them hold it. Well, none of those actually worked out. The best shot I got was this little man, little young boy, and he had his ice cream guarding it. And he's coming out of the store like this. And he wasn't going to let anybody take it. And so I quick grabbed a shot of that. And that's what we're painting today. And of course, he had a red shirt on, so he won. <laughs> so, but I just have to say <clears throat> thank you to Chad, to Chad and Owen because they were such good sports. All right, so we're going to start painting. Um, ice cream has form just like anything else. Where are we going to start today? We're actually going to start with the red background because that's going to make the ice cream pop. So I'm going to mix some red. And besides, we didn't have enough red on the last show. All right, so I'm going to take some Ked Red Light and add a little bit of quinacridone violet and make a nice deep red. That's happy. I've never known a red that wasn't happy. Oh, this is great. Okay, that's a good base. So I'm going to go ahead and, and just base that in, and uh, we'll see how that works. Going to paint the background rather quickly because we're going to spend a lot of time on this ice cream, not as much time on the hands. All right, so it's light over here, or lighter. The lettering, I'm leaving the lettering that's in the reference photo in in the final picture because I think it helps the composition. At least that's where, that's how I feel about it today. At this very minute. And I'm not worried about this being too perfect. Oh, you know what? This is just happy. Look at that red. I think I went through wet red withdrawal. The little guy was all by himself, just him and his ice cream. I didn't make him stand very long because he just he wanted to get to it. I 
Yep, that's good. It's always a good thing when your painting starts off with the right, you know, with the right shade and you're happy just from the very beginning. It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes I struggle through the whole thing. Even now, after I've been painting this long. I don't have a I don't have trouble finishing paintings. I, I usually finish what I start. So if one doesn't work out, I throw it out. And I've got one I'm thinking about throwing out, but I gotta give it another another chance. Sometimes I do a little off with its head a little too early. Nice little space in here. You know, I like the fact that it says USA in the background. That's that's a uh, little American ice cream here. All right, I got some more red hair. I'm gonna have to make a darker red for some of the folds in the shirt, but I'm not gonna do anything too fancy. That's red there. Chad and Owen, they were just a crack up during the whole time. And what a good sport their mother was. Okay, so that's that's the other thing. Their mother's trying to get them to eat ice cream carefully and properly. And I'm like, yeah, tilt it this way so the, so the uh, chocolate will run down and it'll be a great composition. And they had it all over their hands and they had it everywhere. And their, <laughs> their mom said, here, I've been trying to get them to eat ice cream really, you know, properly. And you're, you're, I, I was messing that up. It was fun, though. Okay, so now I need a little darker, we'll add a little interest here. So I'm going to add just a little bit more of the quinacridone violet. And let's see, some more, we'll have some more carbazole violet too. Really darken that up. That's nice. I could, I could darken it up with a green, but that would be muddier than I'd like. All right, so this is kind of dark hair. And I want a nice little easy transition, not, not something that's complicated. I love all these organic shapes. I don't think I have a straight line in the whole thing. That's good. have to be really careful when there's straight lines. I don't like being that careful when I paint. But if you do, that's cool. All right, there's a little more interest in here. And let's just fill in some of the red and the lettering. And so the center is red. You know, the cool thing about this shirt is that it's, the lettering wasn't precise, it, it was tattered and so, again, I don't have to be that careful. Yeah, that's good. A little more hair. A little more red on top. And, of course, a nice big old red S. I could sign my name in the middle of this S. Speaking of S, oh, my God. Over the weekend, I was visiting my niece, and um, this S reminded me there was a snake in the house. Um, must have come in through the cat door, or, or hell, it could have just it could have come in anywhere. But uh, uh, walked by it barefoot, and, oh, my God. I was like, wow. Ah! So... Um, my niece, <laughs> we tried to get it with a bucket and a broom, but um, it didn't, we made it mad. We thought it was dead, that the cat had stunned it, but no, um, it was alive. So we, uh, <laughs> we, we really did try to take care of it ourselves, but uh, I have to tell you, I was chicken. And I, uh, she said, call somebody. I said, I'm not calling somebody. I, I ran out the door and got the neighbor next door and got him to come over and take care of it. <laughs> there was no way I was going to wait for somebody. So, uh, but gosh, that was something. I don't like snakes. 
And the funny thing is, okay, she's up. When I brought the guy from next door over to take care of the snake, she is up on the piano, on her tippy toes, <laughs> on the piano, on top of the piano, so the snake couldn't get her. Not like I was any braver. I'm the one that ran, ran and got the guy. But it just cracked me up that she was still on the piano when, when he got there. Okay, I think I'll outline the USA and just get that little lettering part over with. That's the only thing we have to be halfway precise with for just a minute. And uh, I've mixed a bit of a dark black with ultramarine blue, carbosol violet, and um, a hint of red just to warm it up. So that's going to be my black. So I'm just simply going to outline these letters. All right, so let's see where this goes. Right here. I like the purple and red. It's like that old woman poem. And I'm not going to wait till I'm an old woman to do purple and red together. Might as well do it now. Get a little more liquid on the brush so that it flows. Got that other side. And back up a little, make sure I don't lose my place. That happens sometimes. I really like how the letters are uneven. That's great. That adds, adds to it. All right, so we have that, and I'll go ahead and outline this little part here. And we'll start thinking about what we're going to do with the ice cream. Now, it's hot in the studio, so there's no way that I could have live ice cream here. Well, I could, but it'd be a mess. I love ice cream. Ice cream is a happy thing. Okay, that's enough for that. Um, yeah, that, that's definitely enough for that. All right, so let's, let's start mixing the ice cream. Get to the good part. Well, like anything with really good form, has a dark side and a light side. And... Uh, we're, <laughs> we're going to look, at, and I did this in natural light so that the ice cream would have one light source. Um, the only problem with that was things were melting rather quickly out there. So let's, let's see, what, how much color is there in vanilla ice cream? Well, this was actually chocolate chip because, you know, there had to be some chocolate. It's kind of like red. There had to be a little bit of chocolate there. So what am I going to start with? I'm going to start with the dark side of the ice cream. So I'm going to start with white, but, you know, that's just way too white for, for an ice cream color. I'll add a little bit of Cad Yellow Deep. That's good. And it needs to be a little warmer. And then I'm going to have to cool it down a little bit. So I think I'm going to take opposite on the color well. I will try some of this violet and see what happens. Looks like orange sherbet. Not one of my favorite flavors. It's a good color, but it's not what I was looking for. Let's see. Let's see how close it is. It's good for the lighter size, but it's still too warm. So I'm going to take a little bit more violet, a little more blue. I know. I need a little green. Okay, we're not going for bubble gum, really. This will be okay when, <laughs> when I'm through mixing. It's a little purple, so to rectify that, I just add a little bit of red. 
And I think I needed a warmer red. <laughs> this might be one I have to tweak a little bit before I get it right. There. That made it warmer. It's interesting, the heat is definitely affecting this palette paper. And it's coming apart. There we go. I'm stretching it out. Now let's see if this is too dark. Maybe, maybe not. It might be all right. I'm going to push some of it over because I want to keep some of that mix. And I will add light white to it and see if I can't lighten it up. The darkest part of the ice cream is not that dark. That's better. It also warmed it up a little. That was nice. Okay, let's see how that does. Ooh, that's good. That's good. All right, this is going to be this side of it. And I'll start blocking that in. And for the, the one side of the ice cream, I'm going to just, instead of the million colors I see, I'm looking for just the right brush. What do I want here? I'm looking for a filbert. This is better. Is this a little too big? Yeah. There we go. We'll use this filbert. Okay. I'm going to put in just this, just the darkest areas. You can see this is not a, a dark value. But it's a good start. And where else is dark? Right over here. I may take some of the darker stuff I mixed and put it right on the edge. This is good. Ooh, it looks like, uh, like a mocha almond fudge. That was my favorite ice cream flavor. Oh, that's nice. So people will think about, well, oh, I don't want to paint ice cream or I don't want to paint faces or whatever it is, and they're worried about the subject matter. And so try not to think of it as some ice cream or a face or a leaf. Look at the shapes. Look at the light and the dark. Everything changes depending on how the light's hitting it. Okay, I'll go right up to the edge here. I'm even picking up some red and that's okay. And you know what? I saw some red right here, like a bright red. It was reflect, must be reflecting off of his shirt. So um, I just want to put that in right now because it's fun. So I'm going to grab just a tiny bit of red and add it to the mix that I have. So it is in the shade here. And just throw that in right there. A little more orange, too. Why not? There was a lot of color in this ice cream. And then go back up to this shadow color. Cool it down a little. Makes me hungry for ice cream. It's just such a happy thing. I was going to paint chocolate because I really like chocolate a lot. But that's just too much brown. <laughs> was, I, I could have put a raspberry, raspberry sauce on it. That would have been great. But uh, the ice cream won because of the color. Although I'm thinking of doing a whole dessert series. And, and um, apricots are in season here in California. And uh, so I'm thinking it's time to do a, paint an apricot pie. There's a little bit there. There's some dark hair. I'll throw the chocolate in on top. I'm going to not worry about each little, little thing here. Okay, so I'm putting in the main shapes here, although there is some color variation. And then I'm going to put the light in, and then I'll just add little, little bits of flavor. 
All right, so what color is this ice cream? It's definitely uh, cad yellow deep. I look, at, I look at things in terms of what, what color they are out of the tube. Okay, that's, that's a, ooh, that's a nice warm, God, that's just good right there. I didn't mix enough. Now, what happens? You know, a lot of times people will mix paint, and they don't mix enough, and they're, oh, my God, how am I going to ever match the color? Well, don't worry about it. Just mix some more. You'll be close, and um, if, if you don't get it exactly, and it will add interest. Okay, I hear somebody out there going, yeah, Shannon, right. Um, I heard you. Uh, <laughs> try it. Try it first, and then email me. So it really will add interest. All right, so we have the light side here. Oh, that is ice cream color. I mean, if I ever saw ice cream color, vanilla, that is great. I used to get ice cream every time I go to my grandparents. I was just happy. They had a neighbor that owned a creamery up in San Jose, California. It was wonderful. Okay, we need more light over here, but it's it's starting to transition, so I'll do a little bit of, little bit of variation there since I'm running out of paint anyway. That's where that variation comes in handy. That's nice. You know, I thought I looked pretty harmless, but boy, standing out there in front of that ice cream store, I made some people nervous. <laughs> oh, thank God I ran into Jean Arnold and her kids. Or we might not have had that. We would be painting something different. Okay, that's enough over on that side. A little bit here. Need to add, add a little variation. So I'm going to actually do a nice little mix where I mix this light with some of the shadow color. And I may have to just move this up a little. Okay, put my hand in the in paint. That's better. This whole thing was falling down. Remember when I said I was going to get a different brand of palette paper? I forgot. Next time I will. Okay, that's a good mid-tone. That will help the transition. I'm going to take the dirty brush. And blend that in with this. And I think, you know what, that's just a little too, little too dark. I'm going to go back to the, I'm going to go back to the light and use, and blend that with that, that mid. That's better. Yeah. That's a much better transition. So I'm doing just the big shapes first. I want to get that sense that it's three-dimensional, and then we'll put in some detail. But we got a lot to do between these little hands and, uh, and the cone. So I, I'm going to cover the canvas first, and then we'll see how much detail we can put in. So the plan for today is block the sand, and uh, this will be rather rough. This will be rather rough, and we'll, we'll, we'll pick an area that we'll focus in on and, and try to get to a fairly finished state, depending on how much time we have. As long as I don't get lost on something, which sometimes happens. Nice little transitions here, very soft blending. Because you know what, on ice cream, if you have, you know, you have to, if you really look at ice cream and really study it, which is kind of hard when you're eating it, but if you have just ice cream and no chocolate chips or any other hard objects, all the transitions are very soft and they're really mellow, and so everything's really well blended. The only time you have hard edges is when you have chunks of chocolate or, or uh, nuts or other, other things. 
other foreign objects in the ice cream. So right here, these are all soft edges. Because right now, I'm pretending the chocolate chips just aren't there. And when you paint, you can pretend anything you like. Yep, that's starting to, starting to make some form. Okay, so I don't get hung up on this, on the ice cream part of this. I'm going to move away from the ice cream, work on the cone for a little bit, block in the hands, and then I'm going to go back and put in a little more detail. So the hands are going to be really quick, the cone's going to be really quick. So let's take a look at some of the colors for the cone. I'm looking at my little reference photo here. That's similar to the ice cream. It's in the same tones, but it's much, got much more orange and red going on in here. So I'm going to take this. Oof, that was over the top. Somebody said I was over the top yesterday. Um, and I used to worry about that, <laughs> but you know what, I mean, and, and then I had another friend that said, you know, you have a dimmer switch, so you kind of tone yourself down depending on, on who you're around, but I stopped doing that years ago. <laughs> I just figure this is just what it is. So if your paintings are over the top, and my paintings are over the top, then at least they're a true reflection of you. Okay, so I've got this nice little red-pink color, which really doesn't do anything until I need to add some blue to it. And a little green, make a nice gray. And why did I pick the green? Because it's opposite on the color wheel of the red, so I knew it would gray it down. And I wanted to gray it into a, a dull... I didn't want a bright, bright side of the shadow. I wanted it dull. I want it to fade into the woodwork here fade into the shirt. Oh wow, that was perfect. It, you know, you, <laughs> yeah, you look on the palette and it looks like it's okay, but you can't always tell. So that's good. I'll get a clean brush. And it doesn't have to be a filbert this time. could be a square or flat. And how much of a, what do we have going on here for the cone? Pulling out my little reference photo. This side is shadow. Now the, the one I originally picked to, to paint, or that I was posing, this little ice cream that I was posing, actually was a waffle cone. It was very involved. And uh, it, it wasn't as nice. It didn't, it was, didn't make a great picture. So. I didn't like the composition, so I decided, you know what, let's just go with a simple, simple cone here. I like the variation there. I'm going to grab some straight. No, no, I better mix some. It's too early to get that wonky sides. I have to show you what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm going to grab a little bit of orange. Remember, I grabbed too much before. So I'll grab a little bit of orange, a little bit of red. Okay, I have a habit of calling this Cad Yellow Deep Orange. So what I'm really talking about is Cad Yellow Deep, right up here. All right, I'm going to add just a little bit of that on this side. Mix it with this nice gray that I have. That warms that up just a little bit. That makes it fun. And then there's some lettering. You don't have to know what the lettering says, but just make some little outline there. I'm working on some bottles and, and some other paintings where there's lettering, but it, and so it's interesting because everybody's trying to figure out what it what it says. Well, it, you know, I can't read it, but it <laughs> but it adds interest to to try and figure out what's going on. Okay, so this needs some light on the top here. I've got this here. Now I'll put light on this side, and we will make this start to have form and pop. I like it when things pop. We're sliding down again. Okay, so we need light. So I'm going to grab some white. You know what, I could take that, uh, I could almost make it out of the cone, the ice cream color. 
a little more light to that. Gray it down just slightly. Oh, that's good. Some days you get really lucky with your mixes and they happen right away. Other times I have to fight. And I don't know if it's because of the length of time I've been painting or if that'll always be like that. I have a suspicious, <laughs> sneaking feeling that uh, it's kind of like golf. You never know what you're going to get. Okay, this can't be too close to the ice cream or that won't work. So I'm going to add a little bit of Indian yellow. And a little bit of red. I'm brush mixing it this time. Because what happened was, you know, in the beginning of the show, I carefully do my mixes. In the middle of the show, I forget that I'm on TV and I start painting the way as if I wasn't telling anybody how I was painting. So, so I'm backing up and saying, okay, I'm brush mixing this and uh, I, will, I will be a little more careful on the next mix. I know it makes it harder to follow. Oh, that was good. Oh, that is just exactly ice cream cone color. Oh, love it. Or at least this ice cream cone color, depending on the light that it was in. A little bit of white. I'm going straight into the white because sometimes you just got to do that. And I'm going to throw in just a little bit of light right under here. And that'll be a little bit cooled down like reflected light. Reflected light is always cooler than where the sun's hitting it. Okay, this is kind of a rough, rough cone here. And I want to make this turn more. And what I mean by turning, I mean three-dimensional. Let's see, how can you make the, this more three-dimensional? Throw in a little bit of light here. And repeat that on the other side. First, I'm going to soften this. I'll put a little bit, not at the very edge, but just right here. Soften that. Bring this over. Bring a little bit of dark hair. Repeat that. So it's starting to turn around. I like form a lot. Form and space. I don't think I should paint flat things. Okay. That's a good start for the ice cream cone. All right, so how can we quickly, and I mean quickly, because we're halfway through the show, paint some hands. Hands, hands I could do a whole show just on the hands. In fact, I'll probably do that. Um, that. That's something that we need to do in the future. But that's not what this particular painting, this is all about the ice cream. So I'm going to block in the hands as quickly as I can. And, um, and then we're going to finish up putting in some chocolate chips and, and uh, making this thing pop. So how do you make hands quickly um, and make them even look like hands? I'm going to put in the dark. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reduce everything to a dark medium and a light. I'm going to put in all the darks first, all the medium tones, and then um, what's left will be light. Okay, so I'm going to flip my reference photo over. And what's a good skin tone here? Grab a little bit of cat yellow deep and some of this violet, doxazine purple. This is too dark for his little hand, but I might overemphasize it. I might overdo it. Imagine that. Okay. So that's a good dark. How much shadowery we have there? Actually, I'm going to need to add a fourth. So this will be my darkest area, and uh, we'll we'll add we'll make a th 
I'm going to mix them all first and then we'll paint. So here's the dark dark. I've got some red but this is warm and I need to, it's too bright so I need to add a little gray to that. Still a little too red. Tone that down with some green. Okay, this reminds me of this weekend. You know, see how this palette paper is just sliding down here. And um, I'm sitting on these rocks at the river. I was up at the Bear River near Colfax. And I'm sitting on these rocks, and they're, they're at an angle, and I'm trying not to, I mean, I had crossed the river, so I didn't mind getting wet, but I didn't want to fall in the river at that particular time. I was, and um, so, so I'm at an angle, and I'm backing up, Trying, trying not to fall in the river, and by backing up, there, I didn't really notice what was behind me until, until I did it, but, you know, there was poison oak. <laughs> I decided the river was a better place to be. <laughs> so, um, when this, this started sliding, I'm actually going to, th this is what you can do at home. I'm going to take this off, because it's just not going to be happy. I'm going to move the color over, and hopefully this last, this other paper will stay up. So I'm going to quickly transfer the color. And this is what you do at the end of the painting session anyway. So I'll take the white, move it over, wipe your knife. See, this is called going to plan B. Here's some uh, phthalo turquoise. And I can name the colors for you. Permanent green. I will get a new tissue. We have cad yellow deep. Indian yellow, cad red light. See, I could let that thing bother me the rest of the show, but uh, I think it would make a bad show. So here's some, what is that? That's perylene scarlet, quinacridone rose, quinacridone violet. I like the quinacridones, they're very transparent. Ultramarine blue. This is a little cobalt blue left over from, uh, oh, an incredible sky I'm working on. And doxazine purple, also known as carbazole violet. Now I've got some mixes. I'll bring those over too. I'm actually going to take this off. I'm telling the other paper to just stay there. So here's my mix. I've got the light. Oops, picked up some blue. Not a problem. There was that. This was, uh, this was ugly, but it, it was there. I might use it for something. There. OK, that's better. Sometimes in a painting, you have to stop, pause, regroup. Um, it's kind of like crossing the river. Uh, the current was deeper than I thought in certain places. And it was stronger, or the current was stronger, and the river was deeper. So you have to stop and get your bearings. And that's when something like this happens, you got to do that with your painting. It's like, okay, let's do this, and then go back to where you were. So where was I? I was trying to get a dark, medium, and light. Let's quickly do that. Now, if you haven't watched the show before, you would know that this is filmed live to tape, and that's why we didn't just edit this out. <laughs> We don't, we don't edit. What you see is what you get. This is what really happens in a painting session. Okay, so here's a nice, that's a nice color, but it's not where I was going. I'm just going to, rather than try to salvage this one, I'm starting all over. All right, so I'm going to get some cad red light, cad yellow deep, a little bit of uh, this mixture with the carbazol violet. And then I'll grab some white and see how that does. Okay, that's a good mid-tone. So we've got a dark, medium, light, and, and one more, and we're there. I think I need some more white. That's the other thing. I, I got a new tube of white, and I kept getting paint all over me, and I couldn't figure it out. I had a hole in the bottom. 
So I just take some clear tape and, and affix it to the tube, and it's fine. Now, it's still fairly new. Lots of, uh, it's still leaking, <laughs> lots of oil. So you need it first before you put it out. All right, so that and a little bit of CAD Yellow Deep because I contaminated my mix here. That's better. And a little bit of this to tie it together. Okay, so we have a nice light tone, a good medium. We got a light, medium, and dark here. Let's see how quickly I can whip out those hands. All right, so I'm going to take my dirty brush that had the violet on it, wipe it off a little bit, because it's my favorite brush, so I've got to do that. All right, so let's, where do we have dark? We have some dark right, uh, now we also have some really, really dark places, so I think I'll put those in first, and that will be different, so I'm going to, sorry. Got distracted. I'm going to grab an, one more brush and do that. And I'm going to do it with straight doxazine purple. And now, nah, got a little red. All right, so this is the very darkest dark right here. With some of this red. This is under the shirt. I can also see where I missed some red. So I'll put that in. Lifting the canvas up, need a little more cad red light because it was not trans. It was definitely t too transparent. Not what I wanted. Okay, and then this needs to be dark, but not hand color. So that's why I'm doing a little purple and a little red. And this is dark under here. A little more violet. Kind of hard to see what's going on there. Oops, I had too much medium. That'll make it too transparent, too. Oops, what happened is, I think I cut off his poor little finger. I'll, <laughs> I'll fix that. Okay, so there's some dark right here. And let's see, his finger goes off like this. And that needs to be dark. Now I can switch. Uh, I'm almost going to outline the darker areas here. And this is going to be definitely a rough version. And I'll quickly kind of sketch this in so that it makes more sense to me and to you. Got a lot of interesting shadows going on with the hands. I'm not even going to play with that. I'm just going to focus on this, the hand, his, his left hand, um, and not even work on the on the right hand, because we're not going to have time to do that and get back to the ice cream. And the ice cream is priority here. I just definitely need to make a map so that I know where I'm going. I've been painting a lot of hands lately. And the thing that I've noticed is it just really depends on really paying attention to the shapes to get that form. And the other thing is, is that I've not at any time been able to just whip it out in one shot. I always need to tweak it a bit. Okay, so the hands are s separated there. This is coming down like this. So this hand is just this, 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 and this. All this stuff, I'm going to leave open. All right, so where's the midtone? 
Get a new brush. Can't be too big. I threw away a bunch of brushes, so it doesn't look like it, but I really did. So I'm trying to find the right ones. All right, this is good. All right, so now I'm going to start with the lightest light. And where do I see a bunch of light? Right here. 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 I'm looking for patterns. There's some light here. Definitely has to be some separation there, so I will tweak that. Scrub some of that in. And as the hand is, uh, you know, there are different planes of the hand, so things to pay, pay attention to are, you know, it's going to be lighter here where it hits it, and then a slightly different plane here, and slightly different plane here in order to make it look like it's actually grabbing something. This little guy was holding on to that ice cream so tight. Whoa. Forgot that was up there. <laughs> and you guys didn't even get to see that. Okay. I know I'll get calls on that. Now I need to put in a medium tone, which I'll quickly do. All right, so actually the edges. And where else is it medium? Right here. There, there, there. I may just go to one finger so that I can get back on the ice cream. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll just finish one finger. All right, so I'm going to put in some dark hair. I'm going to add just yet another, another variation here. This needs a little red and is, and is where you can tell that he's grabbing hard on his fingernail. And I'm blending this softly. That nice little pink stuff going on here. Yeah, that's better. You can see the nails start to emerge. It's all in the blending. Okay, so then I need to make another transition here. And after I get this blocked in, I definitely want to take a look and see how we're doing. And I'll just need to step, step back and look. So if you have a mirror at home, step back and look at the mirror, get back, get away from your canvas so that you can see what you're really doing. If you're too close to it, you can't see it. I can't see it. There are things that I think look really good when I'm close up and I get back and they don't. <laughs> or, or I could be close up and, and um, I get back and they, they're better. So. And I have some paintings that if you go in the next county, they look really, really good. So that's when they go to the dump, if you've got to get that far away. I just took a load, a couple loads to the dump recently. Very liberating to throw out things that didn't work. It gives you room to do more things, try more, be brave. And it's fun to throw them like frisbees. Okay, this finger is starting to get some form. So I'm going to step back and look. I know it's really bizarre to just see. It, it kind of looks like Monty Python. You know, you see this finger <laughs> by the ice cream. Um, but what it does is by, by blocking in this one area, you get, by putting that one thing in, you get that separation. It shows the space between the finger 
and then back to the ice cream, and then back to the shirt. So it does help put everything into context a little bit. Okay, what else does the hand do? A lot. Holds the ice cream. It has a very important job. Okay, I think that's enough for that. I will blend it and we will go back up to the ice cream because I really want to play with that a little more. So I'm taking a clean brush and just scrubbing here. And I also picked up some color I didn't want, so I'm taking care of that. I'm going to wipe my brush on the paper towel. I'm laughing to myself thinking I need to do a, a you know, this finger has soul <laughs> show. But we'll see how that, how that turns out. Okay, then I'm going to put light over the top and that's it. So where's the light on the finger? Right here. Not quite so much here. I'll, I'll emphasize that just a little bit. And then I have to stop, Shannon, stop. I like Forrest Gump. A little light in between. See, now you know why I did not start with the hands. We would have never got to the ice cream. Okay, so I'm stepping back, looking at the ice cream. It definitely has form, but it needs to be punched up just a little bit more. So let's, let's do that. And if you cut this off here... Um, and you could definitely see that it's, it is starting to, to take shape. So just pretend this stuff isn't happening down here. <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. Okay, so what do we want to do? I want to add even more variation to this. So let's try throwing in some chocolate. And this chocolate, was in, most of it was in the shadow side, so we'll just throw in a few little chips. And it's not that brown, it's, it's definitely got more red in it than brown. And that's not because it's me. I really think it does. So I'm put, oops, that was too much green. How could that happen? Okay, so there was a little chip here. I'm just doing some random shapes because, you know, these aren't, these aren't uh, defined exact shapes. Okay, there's a little chocolate there, there's some there. This will be, there's a little ridge there, there. Okay, what else could I do? We've got a little, few little chips going on there, but it's not dark enough. You need, just need to punch it up just a little bit. And in this last little bit, I'm going to throw in some red hair. A little more gray. And make it darker. And that's going to do it. See, that's going to give it more form. So I have within the shadow side, I have more depth. And a little more right in here in the center. Oh, this is yummy. I'm going to eat ice cream when I go home. This is good. I was going to bring some for the crew. We do not have a freezer here. Okay, and then there's little bits of fingers of just waves of little crevices. Now, if you're going to paint snow or you're going to paint something else, it's going to be the same kind of thing. Clouds. Pay attention to the subtleties. There's a lot going on. Okay, so this, this really gave you an idea of, of, you know, if you look at just the ice cream and the finger <laughs> in the background, you get a really good idea of, of how to make form. And if you have any questions about this, please email me. You know, I always want to be accessible. So email me at Shannon at ShannonGrissom.com. And I would be happy to answer your questions and take a look at what you're doing. And you say, hey, I'm stuck. And I'd love to see it. Um, I really appreciate the comments that I've been getting, too. It, it just really, um, it's, it's nice to hear that you're enjoying the show. So if you're wanting to make form, 
What do you need to do? Dark, medium, and light. And if you're having trouble with the colors, again, email me. I'd be happy to help you out. And pick a subject. I, I have to tell you, I had never painted ice cream before. Pick a subject because you love it and just do it. That, that's the way to make it happen. Thanks for watching. Give your wall some soul. I'm Shannon Grissom.